<clears throat> okay. I got you, Leela. Thank you. Yeah, so what to say about something that was never born? Right. <laughs> Silence is the best. Yeah, that's another word. Uh, here, silence is heard as another word for unborn. Yeah. Or stillness. Yes. Or emptiness. Yay. <laughs> then everything's free to be what it is, you know, without you getting in there mucking it up. I, I wanted to uh, say something. Uh, I watched that video that you did, uh, Leela, with George. It was really good. Um, and I wrote I wrote it what you said because I most likely will forget. But <laughs> said victim responsibility, and then it's no responsibility, and then it flips or responsible. No victim responsible, and then it's no responsible, and then it flips. And, and that reminded me of when uh, when I was so much into the 12-step program and um, for about a seeming, what, 21 years. And during that time, it was, a, I would, I have to say that that helped the person relax a little bit and take responsibility for her, for what she says, does, and thinks. And then when this happened or, or just when, when I had this clarity or seeing, like you said, Leela, it flipped because the truth of the matter here is that there is no responsibility over what comes out of this mouth, what I say or what I do. There's no one here doing that. That's the difference. Yeah, how ironic. <laughs> yeah, it seemed that way uh, in the story that there was a trying to get out of the victim consciousness and even thoughts like, well, I didn't do that, but I must have done it somehow karmically. You know, I was trying to take responsibility for everything. <laughs> and, um, you know, it it led to a lot of introspection and just seeing what was popping up here, you know, all the beliefs and stuff like that. And it's so ironic that taking full responsibility can just flip like that. And then you're like, Oh, it's just this, you know, there's no one to be responsible. <laughs> Very well shared. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. You need, you need to, you need to, for responsibility, for cause and effect. Yeah. Everything we've ever learned is based on subject object. Me and other. And that was the relief when I, when there was a seeing that none of, that there's no one that I'm not. Of course, the body goes and pays bills and, takes the car to go shopping, buy food and all of that. Um, but I feel like it's just, it's, it's deeper than that. It's, there's just, I don't see, I, I don't see anyone here doing it. Do you know, I just see that, that there is, there's just no doership here, that there is just going to the grocery store, going into the shower, using the bathroom, paying bills, uh, there was just so much meaning to that, uh, me being responsible for everything. There was just, it felt very um, solid. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's insane looking back at, at that whole structure, the, the whole, the heaviness of the belief that I'm doing this. I'm responsible. 
Um, and then the obviousness now of of the thisness, just this. Um, it seems like a fun trick, you know. <laughs> well, it is. It's this is empty. So really, when you're saying it's just this, you're not actually saying anything. <laughs> mm -hmm. And yet expression happens, you know, the body seems to know what to do. And there's just spontaneity of appearances. Yeah, and meaning, meaning can appear. There's nothing, you know, meaning seems to have a dirty word <laughs> in the spiritual community. No, meaning can appear. Something can appear. Someone hits your car. It may mean something. <laughs> but it's just not you doing it. You're already not involved already. Ah, uh, I got already in early. <laughs> yeah, that's a fantastic point. Meaning can appear. Yeah. But there seems to be a um a meaninglessness that's with it. Yeah, I have a cute little that I always remember when I was like still in deconstruction, the first two letters of meaning is me. <laughs> or is there so fun? <laughs> and then this thing goes bananas because it goes, well, yeah, and the first three letters of concept is con. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Yeah, like little clues. But it's more playful, right, you guys? Like, yeah. you know, it's not as heavy. The, the word lighter, I hear, like, yeah, I went and saw Paul Hederman, Leela. I went and saw, he was here in Los Angeles a couple years ago. Oh, I love him. Yeah, and he, that's his drumbeat, was traveling lighter. That's pretty much all he ever talked about. That's where I got that from, was Paul. Yeah, it's funny. I'll tell you a quick, funny story. So at the end of his meeting, was at a coffee uh, shop, uh, actually near Dodger Stadium. And uh, I asked to take a picture with him. And he said something I've never had anybody say to me. As he was standing next to me, getting ready to take the picture, he goes, uh, just so you know, I never smile. So you see this picture, I got a big cheese eaten grin. And <laughs> he's, just, he's just. Oh my goodness. Beautiful. <laughs> It was like the happy and sad face, you know, the life of death. You know, it was perfect. It was the yin and the yang right there. Yeah, he's he does too smile. He just don't do it for cameras. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, he's, I love, he's, man, he's been, and that's, right, Indira? Maybe you, did you ever hear about him through, through. I don't even know, I don't know who Paul Hederman is. I've, I have never met him before. Heard him. You're gonna, you're gonna love him if you look him up. He's he's a recovering addict. Oh, he used to be a cocaine addict. Yeah, wow. he's an angel speaker, and uh, he is so colorful. That's awesome. <laughs> he cusses like a sailor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My eyes seem to water randomly because of just like, I don't know, like happy tears, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm much more uh, sentimental and emotional. And, you know, I went and saw a kid's movie with my sister, uh, Harold and the Purple Crayon. You know, it's probably for eight-year-olds and I loved it. Oh, I have to watch it with my son. <laughs> yeah, it came out in the movie theaters. Uh, it's one of the rare movies that, they actually, it's actually better than the book because the book's a very simple story about a little child, like a little three-year-old kid with a crayon and he begins drawing a, like a ladder to the moon and he goes up and sleeps in the moon and then he crawls back down and goes back to bed asleep the end. Like that's the whole book basically. It's a little more than that, but, but the movie's got other characters. It's got a porcupine, you know, it, it's got a moose. Um, they go into the real world. So they leave the pages of the book and then they appear as real people, but they're still kind of look like a porcupine and a moose. And I don't know, I was entertained. Wow. There's a uh, lot of symbology there. Huh? Yeah. 
What did you take away from the movie or that moment? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, well, one, it was very playful. So if they got into trouble, like they could, he could, now he's in the world and he's, he's older, like in the world, he's, you know, like, I don't know, 20 or something. And he can get out of trouble by, they need an airplane to get away. So the purple crayon comes out, they draw an airplane, they hop in and, and they take off in this purple airplane that can fly. And it's just magical. And that's, that's what reminds me of this. Like, this is magic. And that's what that movie reminds you, that there really is magic. You're seeing it. Yeah, and how it can appear to be story making, you know. Well, maybe that's our purple crayon. I love or that even, it's purple. Or even conflicts that may arise in the stories, at least in this in these stories here. <laughs> I was just um sharing with Leela, you know, um there was a in the other video that I shared with her, there was even another memory of someone that there was conflict. And um, that was arising, uh, reaction was arising in here. Um, fear arose here and uh, misunderstanding arose between the two of us. And, uh, and then after that, it was, um, I think it was, I don't know, maybe a couple of weeks later after back in November when I was doing the inquiry and really feeling into the inquiry, like I had just completely forgotten about it. And when I saw her, it was like it never happened. Even even a conflict a couple of weeks ago with this individual, there was misunderstanding between us. And then there and then that and it then it was done, you know, like a dog just getting over the whatever like barking and then goes into a corner it, it it wasn't if it felt meaningful in the moment but then after it was just meaningless see that's to me that's the um that's that's the i love that that is like there's no suffering in that whereas i can remember a time of just hold, there was a person in here seeming person holding on to thoughts of and now it's just there are thoughts of that but it's just it's flimsical it's back here it's not so much in the forefront it's like starting over all over again yeah it's the it's it's only in time you know or in memory mm -hmm. it isn't real anymore you know and that that's complete freedom when you're like oh I can just be with this, you know. And without the story, it's not so heavy. Mm. The suffering. Yeah. The suffering. Yeah, I hear uh, when I was on the spiritual seekers path, the, it was a double whammy. Because let's say... There was a disagreement, right, between two people, like me and someone else, my sister or something. Then there's a wish for that shouldn't be here because I'm spiritual and mm -hmm. that's that's proof that I'm not there yet because I'm still getting triggered. And now I feel guilty. So you can throw that in. You know, it's like a soup of like, no wonder you're pulling your hair out. You know, it's you just don't know how to get out of it. And the thing is, you can't see you were never in it. Yeah, it's an invisible place that doesn't exist, this enlightenment. It it only exists in a thought or, you know, in, in a part of a conversation. Um, how do you know you, you've made it anywhere? Like there, there's all of that falls, just falls apart. It just crumbles, you know. Am I there yet? <laughs> uh, You know, it's almost like the devil, just to get dramatic here, <laughs> um, it's almost like man figured out that material objects 
wouldn't do it. Like eventually relationships, money, sex, food, all of it wears off. Like, ah. And so the devil said, ah, we need something that won't wear off. I know enlightenment. Because <laughs> you can keep chasing that baby till the body takes its last breath. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Or not. The opposite of we're not here yet, I would say, is well, we're here. It's always here. <laughs> yeah. I, I I feel like there's a playfulness in seeking. Um. I, I feel like it's for the sake of seeking, whether it's conscious or not. Like, it's just what wants to happen, you know, when it's happening. What wants what, the game that's wanting to be played. Um, because, you know, there's a there's a fear of the unknown. Mm -hmm. And and we just like to, like, dance and run around and play in the concepts uh, <laughs> in the known. Yeah, there was a lot of denial here, a lot of denial and a lot of uh, avoidance. Um, and uh, so I was so stuck, so caught up in the thought, well, like you said, I'm not here. I'm not there yet. There's got to be something better. Um, even even when I would go to the meetings, there was a saying that we all said, and I, I, there was an agreement that I had with that, that in order to find peace or to get peace, I need to go to a meeting for an hour to get peace. I need it. I need the meeting. I need it. And wow, gosh, thank God. It's just, there's none of that happening here anymore. And sometimes there's a, there's a wanting to go just to connect with other, with other bodies. And then there's just a curiosity, but there's no expectation here. And, um, but, but that seeking energy felt very, um, it felt very constricted and con kind of controlling. And it felt there was a lot of suffering and it was laced with um, expectation and imagination and worry and fear and not good enough or self is just just feeling bad that sense of feeling bad or not good enough um it was just laced with so much of that mm. and now it's what's beautiful like what you were saying um michael um is that all of those things can arise a moment of it can arise and i can i like i said i can see it and feel through it you know, um, if there's an expectation, it can, it's part of all of this. It's, it's not extradicated from this. It's part, it's always been a part of this. Um, there may, there may be an interaction uh, memories of interactions and then there's a sense of feel uh, that would arise and not good enough would come up and there would I would feel it and see it and then look at what what's behind that emotion the words behind it what's going on here and there would be I can there's a seeing that there's comparing and sometimes it doesn't even have words it's just a sensation and and then just to feel through that and then it's gone. And then the next moment presents itself and then I'm doing something else. You know, it, it, there's no like, well, I have to sit here and write about it and heal something in here. There's no one, mm -hmm. that, that's another thing though. There's no healing here. Boy, what an illusion that was. There's, I, there's nothing to fix. Just to feel and to see. How freeing is that? And it's for no one. It's just, <laughs> yeah. 
Comparison is the thief of joy. I've heard that. (laughs) (laughs) Even like confusion is fully, fully already confusion. Like it's already this. Um, um, Gregory said, um, the feeling of something missing is, is not missing. (laughs) <laughs> yeah that. yeah it's just a feeling it's not separate separation is not separate it's just separation it's just like you said indira it's just what's happening in the moment but it it doesn't stay like you you get involved in something else and you're not even thinking about separation you're doing your dishes there's no story behind it to hold on to <laughs> Yeah, there can be like intense sensations, um, but it's different without without the belief in the stories about it, you know. Mm. It's usually not a problem. Mm. Wow, that was beautiful. Not a problem. Well said. I, I had shared with Leela a while back a memory of, I guess it was a month or two, I don't remember, but I woke up from this dream and there was so much, I, I felt there was trigger, I, there was there was emotion, just deep emotion. And I did do some writing, but I also did mostly just feeling and allowing the body to weep. Mm-hmm. But with that, at the same time, it, it was okay. You say it's not a problem. I look at it. It's the same thing. It's 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 an okayness that 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 the body needed to weep or allowing the body to weep. I, there's just no suppressing here. And and then the day it was it was done. And the next day it didn't. Or you know it was it wasn't a problem. It was okay. I like the word vulnerability. It, it's, it feels like a bravery to just admit that nobody knows anything could arise, you know. Um, it's a bravery, not that anyone does, but um, that can arise that's uh, not sheltering itself fr- with concepts. And that can just bloom like a flower, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, how can concepts touch the unborn? It can only imagine it touches it. It is it. So paradoxical. and yet not (laughs) Uh, yeah that's the paradox (laughs) yeah i know what you mean about um things touching you more like being more crying I, i when i was i don't know if any of you saw i did a video on the time a little girl asked her mom what this rumor was she heard about santa claus I posted a little video about it and um as i was telling the story i got my voice got a little like because i realized to the little girl and i remember even here you know there was a moment where santa claus was definitely real like brought there was proof brought presents there they were like the tooth fairy i just remember the first time i woke up and there were two quarters you know, under my pillow and the tooth was gone. That was proof. There was a tooth fairy. They told me there was. And if I was good and went to sleep, you know, I'd be happy. Just put the, so it's just, when I said the little girl came home and said, mom, like she was really concerned. Like it wasn't funny to her. What's this rumor the kids are saying that there's no Santa? That's like saying, 
it's like there's no self. You know, it's devastating. Like, that's why I'll hear Tim Cliss talk about, you know, he cried a lot, he said, like when he saw the me wasn't really there. Like he said, I don't know, six weeks or something of weeping. Yeah, yeah, Tim, Tim. Now that wasn't the case here. Like here was great joy. I was suffering so dang much that to get out of the suffering was happy days. I've heard people can do that. They can just cry like a really, really lot. Like during that time. Yeah. Because um, it's your like, it's like your core belief, right? The me, the self is your number one deal. And if that scene to not be there. Whew. Yeah. And somebody might say, well, who is there to cry? But there's all, there was never anyone. This, this is all just arising. Like, spontaneously like any other animal how they react to their environment um never needed someone to do this to react i mean people may say who is there to cry but who is there to drop the apple from the apple tree when it's ripe that's it I, I felt, it just felt a sense, there was a sense of relief. And and there was a sense of shock at the same time. And, and a disappointment. And the relief was, oh, but just, just seeing everything. It's right here. Right. <laughs> right here. It's, and it, the, the clarity was like, wow there was just so much attention on imagination and fantasy of what, of what I guess liberation is or awakening. Um, and I remember I was watching Angelo for a long for a while, seeming mm. while. And um, what is he talking about pre awakening? All of these verbs, I mean, nouns or whatever, I didn't understood, understand. And then when that when that m moment, I guess it was just actually a glimpse, and it's not fle doesn't feel fleeting. It it felt fleeting because I was so drawn into the thought that there is more than this, that there's got to be more than this. There is that 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 energy that that I was making agreements with that dropped, and so there was like oh there was a sense of relief and. And then I would look behind the fear thoughts and what I would find is absolutely nothing. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, I was sharing this with a friend because we were doing it back and forth. Another uh, pathless person, if you want to say, who's on this pathless path. I'm like, oh my gosh, there's nothing behind it. And then there was that sense of relief. And then just... It was a relief for me. Yeah, it, it was for me too. Um, it was a little disappointing, like you said. Um, and there was a lot of hilarity. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what, what was what was funny about it? It just felt like a, a, a prank <laughs> in a way. You pranked yourself? Yeah. <laughs> Nope. <laughs> yeah. Way, this this is playful in that way apparently you know it likes to to play hide and seek apparently <laughs> yeah but, uh, i i just wanted to say that i was very relieved because i i i was suicidal for like 20 years i mean i i had ideations of it like every morning when i woke up and um so yeah, it was a huge relief to see that there's nothing to kill <laughs> mm -hmm. already. Yeah, the poor body gets it gets punished. Yeah. And then compassion arose immediately, it seemed like, you know, for me. Everything is innocent. Yeah. Same here. Compassion.
when when before I didn't even know the meaning of the word. Mm. Yeah, I, I, here was when it's all about me, there wasn't so much compassion without all the energy going here now, like seeking and it's all, there seems to be an availability and openness here now to listen to others and to get into their story and enjoy it because now it's not about me. It's just what's happening. Yeah, it does feel that way. That self-centeredness is, is not there. It's Separate. a there's no separation sorry <laughs> no separation well i was just going to say it's exhausting like here the seeking and the mind trying to figure it out um i often say at my meetings uh try everything try everything you think will work really nothing wrong with it go for it here it just eventually i ran out of tries I tried every book, every even esoteric ones that Leela in her early days even made a video about. What was his name? Joseph. Uh, better, Led Better. Can't remember. Better. I, don't know. I made Benner. the video. And I... Joseph, Joseph Benner. Yeah. Oh, so, that's it. Yes. Yeah, yes. yeah. This is like an old channeling dude from back in the day. But it's like you'll you can go through that. Like you'll like oh this sounds so profound. You know, let me just like, like you say, get lost in the words. Like it's, but it's work. It's still a doing to get something. And eventually there can be a dawning that no, no one else knows what's going on either. Mm -hmm. Nobody, not, so no book's going to give it to you. No person, nobody. I don't know what's going on. Nobody knows what's going on. That's, that's it. That's the freedom that no, it's the knowing that I think I know something that in a way is the bondage. And that's the beauty too, that any whatever anybody in the world is doing is perfect. It's part of the, their this. <laughs> <laughs> it's part of their this. It's it's perfect. There's nothing wrong with it. Like there was nothing wrong with what 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 I was doing for all those years. I had a thought, but it just slipped. <laughs> Wow. Oh yeah. The, I didn't want to talk <laughs> in the beginning because wow, there was like such a noticing that everything that came out of here was dualistic. And that was new. And I was talking to my friend Luchana. I said, it just, it feels uncomfortable. She goes, well, you're noticing it. You just, there's a noticing. You're catching the thoughts, but it, it, it felt uncomfortable because it, there was no more attention on, you know, on stories and dialogues and this over there and over here that didn't make sense anymore. And, and then eventually Thank goodness there was some integration. There was more of a, I call it intuition, like a trust, something in here that just, it's nobody in here, but it, it's, um, it just felt natural to just go with the flow. That's what came, came up for me. Just go with the flow. It's okay that whatever comes out doesn't make sense and it's dualistic. How else are you going to communicate with, with the world or communicate with other people? Can't go around saying, well, to my brother, well, there's nobody in there and there's nobody in here, <laughs> you know, they're, they're just, so there's, there's been more of a melting uh, of like an integration this year and it's okay. It's totally okay. But I could just remember, I just didn't even, even on Facebook, that was, an, that was another change I noticed too, because I was very much into the positive and spiritual and ego and, you know, do this and do that and your life will be great. And, oh, it just felt like nonsense to me. It felt like something left and something came in or not even come in. It's like, I, I, so there's no desire to even, well, behind it, honestly, it was, you know, look at me, I'm spiritual, honestly, uh, positive. I can help you. That, all of that has dropped. And I just, I mean, I post stuff, but there's no, 
and if it if it comes up it comes up but it, there's no desire to go back to what the character was doing those seeming years yeah even though it was perfect then too <laughs> yeah you look back and it, it it sort of changes the past it make it makes it all effortless you know you sort of remember it remember it differently i guess mm -hmm. but there was an awkward period of of seeing that we're, all words are futile they don't point to the truth all words you know i would hear my say myself say like pass me the salt or something it's just simple and it's like what what that doesn't even refer to anything like uh, and then frustration because I wanted to speak about this, you know, but everything I said wasn't right. And uh, like you said, like an integration, there had to be a seeing like, oh, okay. Yeah, no, you can't, you can't speak about it. Uh, and then that, then there was a playfulness about it. Because it's always been inherently meaningless. No way to point to to this. <laughs> Beautiful. And I love your videos, all you and Michael. I, I just sit and listen and it's just so much resonance. Oh my God. Leela has found a part-time career. She is so good at making everybody's video People love when she does it. Her voice is so perfect, you know? Yeah. And in fact, Leela, one of the things you said that I posted of yours was you said that it was it was more like a fog lifting. And it's so not it's not replaced. The sense of a me is not replaced anything. It just seemed to have never been there. Yeah. Fog lifting sounds like something happened, but you know, we we're going to fail every time we try to describe it. Mm -hmm. um, maybe like an unhappening. Uh... <laughs> That's funny. How can an unhappening happen? <laughs> but the alreadiness and the always, always was this way. Um, and not being able to see awake people versus asleep people. Um, yeah, it's, you can't know, know it in, until you see it, I guess. Uh, and then you see that you never, you never didn't know it. It's always been um, so intimate. Thank you for the compliments about the videos. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, people love them. So, I mean, really, it's not everyone can do it. You know, it really is something beautiful, at least here. That's how it's seen here. It has to have the emptiness there. This doesn't seem too interested if it, you know. I really enjoy your Zooms, Michael. Thanks. And I like what um, you called, we called my video that you did on me is it's a magic show for nobody. And then the last part, which this does touch me. This is the part that almost that does bring tears. It's a magic show for nobody until it isn't. So that's, at, you could say at death, when the body comes, just the, it's the end of the magic show. You know, for, for this perspective let's say mm -hmm. so that's like you know the magic shows right this is it it's not in the future it's not in the past it's just here yeah yeah it's like a, a constant flow in river you know humans and their metaphors. <laughs>
about four days ago, or is it five days ago, or six days ago, uh, I work at the uh, as a flight attendant for United, and I was at the uh, terminal coughing, and <laughs> but I I just it was fine, it was all good, and not feeling well, but doing it, and um, and there was an okayness with that as well. Mm -hmm. I had shared how thoughts were coming up about it and it, and then there was just a seeing of it and not uh, having any agreements with it, which was so incredibly freeing. And then this woman sat by me and I, from Jamaica, just sitting there and I'm looking at her, at the specks of her eyes, the colors of what she was wearing. And we had this really nice conversation and I felt so fully, I, I just met her for the first time and she was just sharing from her heart and it was just so beautiful and I was able to whatever came up share with her and it was like it was just beautiful <laughs> I think well you know there used to be stories around whenever this body would have a cold or asthma would occur or whatever and uh there would just be stories about oh you know there was almost like a, a a sense of separation even though i see no separation and there would be like a, a wall up with with other people and um that was one of the things that dropped too is like there's there's no such thing as separation like i speaking with leela i felt like i've known her for I don't know, a thousand years seemingly. And, and you, Michael, just listening to you, I feel like I've known you for, you can't explain these things, but it's beautiful, you know, the joy of sharing and and resonating. So. Yeah, it's so beautiful. It's so fun. You know, we can't, we can't know each other's experiences. Um, but you know we can resonate i like the word resonate it just means you you like something you know <laughs> or love something but it seems energetic well i've had people ask me at my meeting what do i mean by resonate because they don't <laughs> they don't resonate with the word resonate and i say the only thing that i said was well why do you love your favorite song You just do. So that's the same with this message. Even if you don't know, like, I don't know all is one. I don't know all is this. I don't know that. But there's just something here that just vibes with it. All is this. It just it landed in the hole. Like, ah, that explains why you can't fix the me, because there isn't one. There's just this. It's not about me but it, that's a huge relief and it, it can it can be scary too you know it makes sense resonating I, I for me it just these what what we're sharing and what you've been sharing on your videos it makes it's it makes sense whereas during the seeking there it would have made sense too but there was more of there was still that trying to get and still trying to understand and, and see it's so hard to put into words but yeah so there's just it just makes sense now here so strange how you can so quickly go from resonating with seeking and and trying to manipulate and control um and in no time at all it's like you can't listen to someone telling you you need to meditate or you need to do this or that you it's just it's hilarious <laughs> yeah i call it the sales pitch um, if, if I get any feeling that someone's like, it just hits me like a belief and it's kind of, I just move on. I always say I'll, that questioning is good, but I mean, 
I always tell people like you, Michael, that do what you want to do. That's. <laughs> yeah. And I agree also, I think you guys talk about, um, you know, what is your highest vibration I've heard or joy? Like to me, that's not a dirty word. I do enjoy sharing every day, right? Or I probably wouldn't do it. You know, I don't think Leela would make all these videos if she didn't enjoy it. So this is our highest. We're not doing this for money. That's for damn sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's for damn sure. <laughs> My husband's like, you need to write a book or something. <laughs> hey, I, I did it. I'll help you. I got one with Nkosi that I wrote about a year ago, uh, where I basically did what you did. Nkosi didn't, I did all, I, I collected his quotes and my quotes that I liked the best and put it in a book. And I figured out it was hard. It took me a while to figure out how to get it up, upload it to Kindle in their format. But I finally did it. It's called Just This. Oh. Thank you, Michael. You're so sweet for offering that. I'll have to, I'll have to buy that and read it. Yeah, or maybe I'll have to send it to you, to both of you guys. No. Oh. I don't know, Leela. Maybe you and I'll have to write one. <laughs> well, I can't say no to you, Michael. So it'll probably <laughs> happen. Listen, sister. At first, it was in Kosi. That was the first time, like I went. Finally, finally, some other motherfucker out there that's singing this in the way I, it wants to be sung here. And then Sander came along. I got, okay, I got two brothers. Finally, I like, okay, now I got a sister. No. <laughs> mm. Words can't express, you know, the gratitude. And, it, it, you know, before seeking i would i would see these seeming little enlightened clicks you know like best friends forever in in enlightenment and i was like i want to be like that you know <laughs> 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 and uh you know it's just that was effortless and this is effortless you know mm. Really, but there's such joy here seeing that I'm not the only one. Because so for so much of my life, I'm like, I just don't fit in. I don't get it. I don't know how they take everything seriously. They seem like they know what they're doing. Um, if they get stressed, it's nothing that some alcohol or a trip to Vegas can't cure, you know? I just couldn't ever, this wouldn't go away. The seeking, the something in me that felt life was off that I couldn't put my finger on, but something was off. Mm -hmm. I couldn't figure it out for so long. It was so frustrating. Mm -hmm. Same here. Same here. Until there was inquiry, <laughs> then the seeming doors just opened. It was, it, you know, it's so subtle. It's natural. It's right here. It's, itch on my leg or this leg there's an itch scratch that's part of it it's 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 everything going into the car driving feeling the air condition on on the face loving it when it's so hot outside and that's part of it car going in front of me or tailgating me a little frustration rises. That's it. Here it is, right here. That's it. That frustration. It's all good. It's everything and nothing all together. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. Boom. Shout out to Rosa. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. It is quite subtle because nothing changes. And everything is different. And I remember hearing that before and being like, what? <laughs> You're going to sit here and tell me that? <laughs> Does not give me anything. 
the same but different. Hmm. It's very experiential. That's why it doesn't feel fleeting. It's and even that that doesn't last, and that's okay too. That's part of it. Experiences come and go. Yeah, but you don't. The experiences come and go, the thoughts come and go, the feelings come and go, the beliefs come and go, the sensations come and go. You never come and go. It's changeless. Damn. <laughs> mm. That's where we started the conversation. We were talking about stillness and silence and uh, the unchanging. I had uh, somebody ask me what si what silence is and what does it mean? And are they missing it? You know, like they're not getting it. And I, I said, it, you know, it doesn't need to be understood. It's it's just like the same word as like unchangeable is what I said. Like the always thisness um, doesn't necessarily mean quietness, you know? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I was telling a dying friend of mine who was <clears throat> so upset because she's got cancer. She's dying. And there was a moment in there and I just... I said, Let, let's do something together. Would you like to do something? And she said, sure. I said, let's just close our eyes for a second. And I said, just, I said, honey, just, I'm doing it with you. Just close your eyes and just put all that attention on your breathing. I'm doing it with you. In, out. Let's put all that attention on that. Let's stay with that. Okay, now put attention on whatever is in your environment right now, what what you're hearing, whatever you're hearing, put attention on that. And I stayed with her on that for a while. And I said, I'm with you, I'm doing it with you, feel that. I said, now open your eyes, put attention on the chest going up and down, just put attention on that. And then the, sap, the sight, the, the sounds, I I can actually hear a like a loud sound like a, you know like it like a loud sound and it, I love it I don't know it's just and she was able to hear her environment and I said open your eyes and put attention on whatever's in front of you if thoughts arise that's okay but look at the shapes and the colors around just it's okay if there's labels that come up but just just stay on that, put attention on that. It's a great, now put, now do it all together. Tension on the breathing in and out, tension on the, the, the sounds, the visuals all together. Where, where is your bum? Is it on the chair? Put your attention on that. Are you standing? Put attention on that. And then I said for a while there, we we're both doing it and I says, what are you feeling? She goes, Indira, there's peace. I said, bam, that's what you are. And nothing else, that's it. All those years you've heard me talk about, because she saw my posts on spiritual things. I said, it's that, it's that silence, honey. It's that silence. And uh, yeah. Oh, beautiful so much more simpler and more obvious than than we suspect yeah that was the power of already the first time i heard in cosi about three and a half years say all is this already that word already stopped me in my little tracks like i'm like are you guys hearing what this guy's saying? He's saying it's already. So what the hell am I doing? Like, what's all the seeking about if it's already? Like, that really hit hard here, like a bullseye. It stopped me in my little tracks because I couldn't argue with it. I go, well, if it's already, then it's already done. As far as like a word or a phrase or something like that, that clicked, for me, it was, it was, it was, that's just a thought. 
I just kept saying that to myself over and over to every thought because I started to see that, oh, uh, I, I actually believe in some of these thoughts, you know, which should be obvious, but it's not obvious when you're like unconscious to it and you're just like in the storm, you know, <clears throat> I didn't realize the nature of thoughts that the, the stickiness and, and that they, that they could be more, more or less meaningful and um that was profound just to just to be able to say that that's a thought you know and then mm -hmm. i did i just kept doing it all the way down to the you know the the original thought <laughs> i am apparently and then i was like oh my god that's just a thought so is enlightenment everything <laughs> the same happened for me but I was typing back and forth with somebody doing inquiry and I realized that I was like, Oh my gosh, there's just thought coming through. This is just thought. And that's when there was this, like, it was like a, like a, and then <laughs> <laughs> I don't know any other way to describe it. I and, love that. And then that week, it was just, wow thoughts that claim to be a doer, thoughts that claim to assumptions, opinions, likes, dislikes, just thought. And I like what you said, that that's where the freedom was. Just, it was, it felt meaningless. Because for so long, there was so much attention on the meaning, which was very solid. Yeah. So it's all transparent now. I understand finally what they meant by that. The solidity and the, you know, the transparency. Uh, I was like, what? Is the world going to disappear? Like, what? What are you talking about? <laughs> but it's, it's, uh, it's all psychological, you know. Uh, it's psychological solidity. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. When there's a, a feeling of a me being there, there can be this parsing of good thoughts and bad thoughts. Oh, I like this thought. Let me hold it. And oh, that's a bad thought. That's that. I don't like that. This feeling uncomfortable, being depressed, being sad, being confused, being alone. Like we should talk a moment about that. The aloneness. It's bad. It's so, it's profoundly, but it's, ah, what can you say? So I think we could talk a like a whole talk about aloneness. I've actually contemplated it the last, um, well, today at least, because I, I heard Tim Cliss's recent meeting and he was talking about aloneness. Um, I mean, you could say that that, that aloneness is you know, just this is, is just this, there's, you know, just the boundless, um, nothing outside of it, you know, that's, that's, that could be seen as utter aloneness, but aloneness only makes sense in, in duality. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In comparison, mm -hmm. in, in comparison to not alone. Yeah. So it's you're right. Boom. It's it's still dualistic. I'm I'm feeling alone and I'm looking for not feeling alone. But when there's everything, aloneness is included. That's it too. Shockingly. So it kind of feels like it's utter aloneness, but it can't it can never be alone really. Because it's all inclusive. But as a human, it can certainly feel that way. You know, you, I mean, we have empathy, but <clears throat> you can't really make someone understand you, you know, and you can't make yourself understand any, anyone else. I enjoy, there is an enjoyment of, I guess you can call, been an introvert, I, just, there's, 
there's a lot of grounding when I'm when I'm by myself. I love the just there's there's no fear in in just being by myself here. Um, and I remember when the last relationship I had was a year and a half ago or something, there was a lot of suffering in that. And then I was saying to myself, this is not it. it it's, it, I mean, it can happen. I've seen beautiful relationships, but in this, for me, this, it, it, it just wasn't it. That was not it. There was a seeking even in that. And then um, when there was a seeing clearly in that drop, there was this, there was this emptiness or this beingness. There's no words to put to it that just felt so. Just felt feels real. Feels like it's it's there's like a sense of safety here. Now sometimes the body will want to do things with others. It, there, that aloneness, that part will come up and like, I to go out to eat with some friends, you know, and the body will call or take a walk with someone. But that, I don't feel like that, that, that there, there's a, that utter lonelessness here, like it was being entertained before. And I, you, you hit it right on the button, um, Lila, there, because there was so much meaning into it. I have to have somebody, there's got to be somebody here. There's got need to be in a relationship. All of that, all of those were just thoughts uh, that, that were being entertained. And hey, you know, it happens, it happens <laughs> now if it does, but there is no, I don't care if it does or not. At this point which is very free it's beautiful i swore men off right before i met met my husband <laughs> <laughs> it's like the universe was waiting for me to swear him off and then it, he gave me my prince <laughs> how, how, how did you guys meet uh we both worked uh for the same company at the time yeah um, I don't feel clingy to him. Like I need him to validate me or, um, you know, I feel like I'm finally able to have a healthy relationship, um, because I've, I feel, I feel complete already. Um, yeah, it's beautiful. It's like, you can be there for somebody more when, when you don't need anything from them, you know? You can just admire them and but it's before good. before I, I you know I, I, like like Michael said uh I, I was seeking in relationships yeah yeah here too you know mm -hmm. and then it dawned that it was because I took myself to be an object or a thing or a Michael like an entity and so naturally, I, I'm going to look for another object to complete me, to understand me, to connect. And it was just always frustrating because nobody could really ever understand me. And then the light bulb went off. Ah, well, it's hard to understand emptiness. <laughs> yeah, this doesn't need to be understood. I mean, I mean, that's that's um, an insight right there wow this doesn't need to be seen or known or anything to be what it is mm -hmm. that feels like a, a party waiting to happen or something <laughs> yeah there's just such a joy here that i can't hide meeting like-minded because you know having gone for so long without seeing anybody that now it's not taken for granted like all these zooms with you guys and connecting and our Leela and i chat all the time it's mm -hmm. so appreciated it's not taken for granted it's so loved it's like ah <laughs> no
Yeah. And even though there's no one here, you, you're not missing out. Nobody, nothing is missing out. <laughs> no, it's like emptiness makes everything fuller. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it comes out in simple ways. I was at Subway uh, getting a veggie sub and there was some like tattooed teenage guy, good shape, but like look like a trainer. And he's schooling me on like what's healthy. He's giving me calorie content, right? I don't care about any of that. You know, give me cheese, give me mayo, you know, load it up. And uh, mm -hmm. he was so friendly and we were vibing. You know, I'm like, you know, three times the guy's age, but we were completely connected. And I'm going, okay, a little, little more tomatoes, some onions. I got you. I got you, you know? And I just looked at the guy and go, you are overqualified, my man. <laughs> and he laughed and we just had like a little, you know, I was with him for maybe four, four or five minutes while he made my sandwich, but it was a delightful, like he waved, said, see you next time. It was like, boom. And I just walked out with a smile, you know, it was just a great feeling. That's beautiful. Yeah. And even after COVID, it seems like um, people are just more standoffish than they've ever been. You know, there, there's less eye contact and, um, handshaking and all that stuff now um but it, it i don't know it makes those those chance encounters like gold you know when somebody just smiles at you genuinely and what just wants to talk to you you know like a little puppy that is like coming up to you shaking its tail <laughs> yeah right your heart goes out to them you're like yeah right you, it is that like that like you just are open and quiet and seeing and the person starts to look at you with eye contact and connect. It just like happens spontaneously. Yeah, there's a joy that arises. You know, I, I think it was a month after seeing clearly for me and it, I just felt like more my, myself, even though there's no self, I just felt there's no more pretending, you know, I could, it, it, it's like, felt like I was out of a cage, even though I wasn't in a cage. And the expressions that come out of here when I was meeting up with people for Christmas and it was like falling in love all over again. And, and that's what it is, you know, when, when I'm in contact with people, it's like, feel like it's waking up to itself over and over and over and over again even though that's not happening it's just this but it's just like being a child again yeah you know no pretenses or anything just just fully friendly because that's what comes from here that's what comes out of here it wants to it wants to to express itself it wants to smile it wants to give you a hug and uh yeah, it's like being a child again. Yeah, it's it's the thought that says, I know that it could be better than this, that just puts this whole dark fog that you can't see through. I know it could be better. <laughs> That's completely delusional. <laughs> uh, the futility of, of acceptance, not that anybody does, but the acceptance a futility you would think would be some some dreadful thing but it's it's the best news ever <laughs> I, I said that i felt like a wild animal you know <laughs> <laughs> a wild traumatized animal <laughs> <laughs> And Indira, I like what you said about a cage because the cage now seems to be gone. Yeah. I can't find a cage. It feels expansive. I don't, it was like an imaginary boundary to me. Yeah. Imaginary, yeah. Uh, was never really there. Yeah. Very well said. Yeah. I think that's that's like the beauty of it. It's like, oh, that was just a dream. Oh, it's like you just wake up. It's like, oh, that's not real. None of this is real. All of it is bullshit. <laughs> oh, 
because <laughs> yeah it is sorry oh it's okay it's all right <laughs> laughter is good there was so much oh my gosh there was so much attention on stories and what this body had to do and it's like being in shackles with the seeking which was fine and then all of a sudden it's not there anymore oh there's no shackles oh well, where's the seeker there's there was never a seeker either <laughs> yeah yeah i talk a lot at my meetings lately about there being like this here was one of the i would say maybe the biggest realization so to say was for so long i i dwelt in the past you know thinking about where I grew up, my house, my childhood home, my first girlfriend, my first kiss. I could I could live in those thoughts. Like just it made me so like peaceful and all that. And um and then one day I just went wait a second. Where is the past? Mm -hmm. I realize there's never been a past. Wherever you go, there you are. That's so freeing though, not like, because the, there was this unconscious dragging around my story, my feelings, where I was born. My parents were both, they committed suicide. My mom both suffered from depression. My dad was a little schizophrenic. So, you know, it all was in there back in the, with the subconscious being care loved, you know, and then suddenly one day it was like like a dream when you wake up and it's not there anymore and you realize shit it never was yeah it's not here well guys i have to i love this this was great i have to get ready for bed <laughs> wake up early tomorrow for a trip but um this was great i love you both Mwah. big mm -hmm. hugs love you thank you <laughs> Indira, so much this really is awesome. yeah big hugs really really enjoyed your your sharing tremendous it's you guys <laughs> love you both love, love you. you talk to you soon okay bye-bye <laughs> bye-bye So, girls, should we make the big announcement? Yes, uh, I, I was going to let you do it if you don't mind. <laughs> so you could check me on the facts, make sure I get it right. So a week from tomorrow, so September uh, 14th, and uh, Leela and I are going to host an open Zoom, open Zoom meeting. Everybody's invited. Um it's going to be 10 a.m. my time, which is Pacific time, 10 a.m. Pacific time. And we're doing it purposely early for European time. So we're trying to get every, accommodate everybody. So Leela's central time, she'll, it'll be noon for her. And then seven hours later, it'll be like in Kosi and Sander time, you know, uh, South Africa and Europe. So uh, anyway, we just wanted to share that. Yeah. You can go to our social media to find the details again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll post a, a link to it um, in the next day or two. I don't know. Are we going to do any kind of, you feel like putting together any poster? Uh, yeah, I'll do that. I'll do okay. that. So good. So in a few days, at some point, it'll be posted in uh, Michael Jeffrey's non-duality community on Facebook. At least I'll put it there, Leela, and I'm sure you'll post it. Mm -hmm, yes. And uh, the link will be there at the top. I'll pin it. So, and, you know, would love to have anybody who resonates with us. <laughs> that was beautiful. Yeah, maybe maybe people could uh, put a couple of questions in the bottom. I don't know if we would get to them, but I mean. Yeah. Yeah, I would love it. Yeah, they could come ask questions or, you know, come with your Zoom camera on or off. Doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> Just love to see a 
Yeah, Leela, it's it's just I have to say, girl, it's just such a pleasure. Yes, it is. This was so fun and it was so flowy. Can't believe it's already over. <laughs> flowy. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I do the same thing. I make up my own words. That's another like freedom. Yeah. I, I was wondering if I if I made up the word alreadiness. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> I love that's exactly what I'm talking about. Like I'll be making a post and you know seem I'll get on like a thing seamlessness, emptiness, you know, and some word that normally you wouldn't put it, you know, <laughs> unseparableness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, ness is very convenient. <laughs> <laughs> oh, beautiful. God dang, girl. Well, listen, <laughs> uh I'm <laughs> I'm probably good. we're going to be talking pretty soon so okay I'll yeah. let, I should let you go yeah I'll work on the poster and uh and maybe I can get a hold of this recording here yeah and if not just just message me I'll send it to you on Dropbox okay thank you so much you. Leva. love you Mike <laughs> love you too bye-bye bye, -bye. bye.